Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining the uh, Highfields Vault of Training Providers View webinar. It's great to have you on today. Um, I'm Adam Glynn, Business Development Manager at Highfield. Joining me today, we've got uh, Chelsea Tyler, Vault Manager and uh, the, uh, the person that's all things Vault and will be delivering the majority of the webinar. Um, also, offering a provider's view, um, so training provider's view on their use of Highfield Vault, we have uh, Rebecca Ashley, CEO of Train to Train, uh, and two members of the PetXI team, Ruth Lowbridge, the lead assessor, or one of the lead assessors, and Gary Drake, head of contracts, uh, all of whom have had a lot of experience of using Vault and will be uh, answering a few questions as we go through. Uh, we have Amy Wilde waiting in the wings, help providing some technical assistance. Uh, I'll be monitoring your questions. And uh, as we go through, uh, again, Amy will provide some technical support as required. Now, before we get started, I'd like to draw your attention to the top right hand side of the screen where you'll be able to see a small control panel. Uh, from there, you'll be able to select audio options, type in your questions uh, as the webinar progresses. Now, we will try to answer the questions um, posed throughout the webinar. Uh, we may have a little bit of time to discuss some of those questions toward the end. However, uh, we do intend to uh, pick up all questions post-webinar so that um, you do have answers to anything that you may need um, uh, us to look at. You'll also see that there's a facility on that control panel to raise your hands. Uh, please use that if you're experiencing any technical issues during the webinar, uh, such as if you're unable to hear uh, or see the presentation. Uh, Amy will pick up those questions and we should be able to get that, uh, that resolved very quickly. Now, after we've finished the webinar today, um, I'll close the webinar and once it's done, you'll be presented with a short survey. Uh, you'll need to wait just a few sections, seconds for the survey to pop up, uh, but please do spend a little, little bit of time to complete and respond to the questions. Uh, as always, and no doubt you'll have been on these webinars in the past, it's really important for you to provide us with some feedback so that we can improve presentations and bring you content that's really relevant to you as the, uh, the, the provider. So, um, what we'll do is we'll start to uh, to go through the uh, the webinar. Um, I'll go through the first, say, uh, four or five slides. Uh, we'll hand over to Chelsea, who will provide us a bit of a demonstration, get some feedback from our guests today, um, and uh, we'll see we'll see how we get on. Hope this catches up with us. There we go. Okay, right. So the agenda for today is we're going to give a really brief overview of the development of Highfield Vaults uh, and so just go through some of the main key features of, uh, of the system. Uh, we'll move into the demonstration, which will be the lion's share of what we do today. So that's the demo of Vaults and um, drawing in also on the experience of those users uh, from a uh, provider uh, point of view. Um, we'll give you a bit of a recap of what we've seen today, uh, talk through some of the ongoing support that's available uh, if you were to use Highfield Vault. We'll have a look very briefly at some of the pricing and the packages that we offer um, as part of the Vault service. Uh, we will, of course, share uh, that information post webinar too. Okay, so I won't labour on about this too much. I'm sure many of you have been on uh, presentations on Vault before, but for those that, uh, that are new to the system, um, Highfield Vault um, is something that was uh, conceived as an idea over two years ago. It's been in development for around 18 months. Uh, we've worked very closely with training providers and partners to uh, give you a system uh, or offer a system that's, uh, that really meets the uh, needs of a training provider allowing us to bring all of uh, an individual a learner's uh, program of learning uh, into one place under one login with uh, really straightforward and simple functionality. Having had the input from uh, our partners training providers, uh, we do believe that we have now a system that will really meet the needs 
uh, the, the end user, both for uh, the uh, the learner and also from a uh, from a training provider's point of view. And the idea is that we'll, we're there and it's, uh, able to offer something that is really very simple and effective uh, as an e-portfolio platform. Now, of course, the Highfield Group, um, it, we are a, a learning provider and an endpoint assessment, or sorry, not a learning provider, a, 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 an awarding organisation and a, a, an endpoint assessment organisation, um, which means that we, uh, we can bring our understanding and expertise uh, on delivery and the challenges of learner engagement and, and, and really feed into a platform that should help you uh, address some of those challenges. Uh, the idea is that we'll end up with a, a simple and flexible pro, uh, system um, that's tried and tested uh, and uh, reliable, safe and secure. Um, the next slide. Okay, so what to expect? Um, so a, a real uh, key uh, thing that Highfield wanted to provide was uh, a system that provides true value for money. Um, so, uh, so very low rates for access per learner, uh, provided on a pay-as-you-go basis. So no uh, large contract fees, no large setup fees in us being able to, uh, to get you up and running with the system. Uh, we want to provide, which we have, uh, a, a learner experience that's really very straightforward, incredibly engaging, uh, and allow them to get up and running on, a, uh, on an e-portfolio system that's very easy to understand uh, and simple to use, having only had uh, a really very quick tutorial uh, on, uh, on how Vault, uh, Vault works. Um, Clearly, sign-in and start is a, uh, a, a fantastic concept and in the world that we're living in at the moment, um, being able to get learners engaged in a platform uh, for distance learning is incredibly important, whether it's a, a long course or indeed uh, a, uh, you know, a, a short two or three week programme. Now, Highfield Vault is set up to provide you with access to preset courses using Highfield learning material. Uh, which are designed to meet the needs of, uh, of Highfield's qualifications. Um, that's in the form, if you've seen them, uh, of our e-kits or apprentice kits, um, which uh, are incredibly engaging. You'll see them today um, and, uh, and they are uh, designed in line with the programmes uh, that, that we can support through Vault. Um, we do intend for Vault to be perfect for uh, apprenticeship standards, RQFs, and all qualification-based criteria. Obviously, we want you and your learners to be able to access that uh, any time of day from anywhere, so anywhere where you've got uh, internet connectivity. Um, now, something that's, uh, that we will do today is just show you uh, the, the basics, um, basic operation uh, functions of uh, of Vault and uh, we'll give you hopefully opportunity to ask the questions as we work through. Uh, but what we'll do, we'll hand over to Chelsea, uh, who'll run us through the demonstration and, uh, and we'll hopefully get some, some good feedback from the guys that are there in the background from the providers. Thank you for that Adam. Okay so as Adam's just mentioned, um, we're going to try and keep the demonstration um, brief but still give you um, the detail which we feel like you need to see. As we work through the portfolio what we're going to do is um, Ruth and Gary as well as Becky who's in the background, um, they're obviously active users on Vault and we're just going to get some feedback from their experience, um, the learner experience to hopefully give you guys an insight as to how Vault can help you and what our other providers think. So all I'm going to do is I'm quickly just going to switch screens so you'll just see the presentation um, close down for a moment. And you should now see that the Vault dashboard is on your screen. So we're currently logged in as a learner. We're going to work through the portfolio from a learner's point of view. So we're just going to have a look first of all at the personal development for employability um, qualification. There are a couple of units in here, um, so we'll just look at one. And this is a qualification um, similar to customer service, team leading, all of which um, PetXI work on actively on Vault. 
Now, from a learner's perspective, all I've just done is I've clicked on the resource and you'll see it's dropped down a gap analysis and an overall progress. What this is, um, is it's basically just giving the learner an idea of where they're at throughout the time which they're working through this resource and qualification. So you'll see the gap analysis just on the left. Um, we've got 86% which has not started, 14% which is pending, and as of yet we haven't got anything completed. And you'll also see that the overall progress obviously reflects, reflects this at 0%. Now what we hope is as the learner's working through and the tutor's signing off the modules which have been submitted, they're going to work through until eventually they're hitting this 100%. But what happens is, as the learner's working through, this is a live update. So when the learner's got a unit which is in progress, or if a tutor's just marked it off, it'll live update for the learner so that they can con to continually see where they are throughout their time on programme. Now, all I'm going to do is, as I mentioned, there's a couple of units um, in this qualification. So you'll see that the way that we've structured them is the self-assessment, producer CV, and then obviously the other units. What I'm going to do is we'll look at the producer CV unit. To open up the unit, all we're going to do is click on it. And you'll see that it's dropped down three activities in there, as well as a PDF. To open the PDF, which is actually the textbook, all we have to do is click on it and it downloads the PDF. You'll see that just at the uh, bottom left. And if I click on that, it opens up in another tab. The reason why it opens up in another tab is so that the learner can leave this textbook open. So if I just scroll through, some of you might already be familiar with Highfields kits. So um, this will look quite familiar to you, but if I just scroll down a little bit, you'll see that this is the textbook which the learner will work through. Now they can leave this open, and if you look, um, follow our mouth just up to the top of the screen, you'll see that dashboard is in a different tab. So if I click on this, I can go back to the activities and leave that textbook open at the top to refer back to. We just find it makes it a lot easier for the learner to have that open rather than going back and forth between the textbook and the workbook. They can just simply just change the screen that they're on at the top. We'll have a look at one of the uh, activities. We usually tend to only try and put up to 10 questions, depending on the activity, um, into a form. We find that that usually means that when we first did this, learners that had, um, say, 50 questions, if there's one activity with, you know, 30, 40, 50 questions, they go into this form and they start working on it. It's just a bit overwhelming because it, it feels like there's a lot to do. Whereas breaking it down into those different activities and having fewer questions to answer at one time, we found that the learners much preferred that. And again, this has come from the feedback from working with the providers that we have in the initial sort of setup and build of Vault. Now, I'm just going to work through, so you'll see question one. Again, this is just really to give you an idea of how this looks. There's a text box here. And all I've done is just popped in sort of a dummy answer in there. The learner will work through and use these text boxes for each of the questions to, um, to obviously fill out the answers. You'll see at the top, there is a number of different options for him to select bold, italic, so they can format the questions and style them. Um, the options there, to be honest, most learners will just answer the questions and submit it to the tutor. But, um, you know, those learners that do want to sort of make their answers look pretty and format them, the options there. And if I just scroll down a little bit, you'll see that this is the same throughout. So the questions are formatted the same. At the bottom, no, not necessarily used as much for this qualification. Um, we'll probably touch on this when we look at standards, but for each um, sort of question and activity that the learner goes into, there is the option to upload supporting evidence. Um, so if they've been working on, again, depending on the questions, if it's an Excel sheet or if they've got something they want to attach to add further evidence to this question, they can attach it down here. They can either um, drag and drop it into the box they can copy and paste links in here, or they can simply click on choose a file and it'll take them into the files on their PC. 
You'll also see at the bottom of the questions, you've got a save progress and a submit. Clicking on save progress, you'll see it'll just say success. If the learner isn't connected to the internet, this will come up and say unsuccessful. But obviously we're connected to the internet at this point. At that point, then obviously they'd be able to go back and connect themselves to the internet while they're still in the form. Now, one thing just to bear in mind, um, we've got the save progress for the learners down at the bottom. However, what Vault will do is if the learner's working through their portfolio, it'll continually save their work up to every 60 seconds. So um, should the learner forget to plug their laptop in or they have a bit of a PC failure, they should only lose up to the last 60 seconds of work which they have entered into this form. Now we use that as a, as a bit of a backup. Um, we obviously encourage the learners to continually save their work, but it is a bit of additional peace of mind because one of the worries for providers that work on e-portfolio systems and move to online is that um, you know the learner can lose their work. It's harder for them. Um, we've done it all before. If you've worked on Word and then your computer shut down, and you, it's saved or something. Um, so we're all quite familiar with that feeling. And as I say, this just works as a bit of a um, bit of peace of mind. Now, once the learner's happy with everything that they've answered, at the bottom you'll see that there's submit. If they click on this, you will see that there's a pop-up just come on screen. Um, this is really acting as a deterrent for um, plagiarism. So it's it's saying by submitting the module, the learner is confirming that their work's their own. They've followed the policies set out by the training provider and awarding organisation that they've undertaken the qualification with. And again, it just acts as a bit of a deterrent for learners trying to copy that work. You'll also see that, the, um, that it says, please note, once this module has been submitted, your editing rights will be locked and it'll go to the tutor to review. So what will happen is, if I just click on yes, submit, I'll show you how that looks. So what will happen now is the tutor will get a notification in Vault and they'll also get an email notification so that they know that the learner has submitted this module. If I just scroll up to the top, you'll also see that this is now um, grayed out so I can't edit anything. I'll, I'll type on the keyboard, you might be able to hear that, but I can't change it. It just means that the learner can't be editing or changing their answers as the tutor is reviewing them and putting their feedback on there. So it just gives you uh, the opportunity to do a sort of true um, marking of that work. Now, what I've just done obviously looks pretty simple. I followed the questions, I've submitted it at the end. Um, so Ruth, probably a, a question for you really, because you work with these qualifications. As I say, what I've just done looks uh, pretty straightforward, but from your experience, what do um, your learners think of it about the usability? Is it as simple for them to follow as what I've just um, showed on the screen? Yeah, definitely. Um, what we do on day one, we just um, go through um, on induction, we explain to them how the vault works, we use um, a student demo account, so pretty much what you've done. And then we take them to the first question, they start and type their answers in. And after that, they're pretty much fine. Um, for the, once the, that particular learning aim has been submitted for the first time, we will go back to the dashboard again, just to go over how they get the next block of questions up. But yeah, after that, really, they have no issues at all. They can use it on their own. Yeah. And does that instill, um, obviously you as a tutor and an assessor, does that instill some confidence in you that the learners are quite comfortable to go away and work on it on their own? Yes. Um, yeah, which which yeah. is quite good really, isn't it? Because, you know, that's, that's a big worry, especially, you know, when you're certain qualifications um, and the structure and the layout can be a bit of a worry to leave the learner to go away and confidently work on this. So yeah, you're saying exactly. that have that confidence yes they do yeah and what we find is like when i put feedback on um what we tend to do the next morning i will say to them you know we're going to look at we deliver just short courses um across a week so what i tend to do is go in the next morning and say right we're going to look at feedback points and what we'll find is learners have already looked at their feedback they've you know they've they've gone in 
saw that have seen that they've got a comment and they've gone in themselves and dealt with whatever it is that I've asked them to do. So that shows that they're understanding how it works. Yeah, that's fantastic because that's obviously, you know, the learners are quite comfortable going in and, and changing their answers and working off that feedback themselves. That's great. Perfect. Okay. Thank you for that, Ruth. Okay. What I'm just going to do, um, if everybody's following my mouth, towards the top left, you'll just see dashboard. I'm just going to click back onto the dashboard. I probably should have made a note of this at the beginning, um, but I don't know if, if anybody took note of this. So on the gap analysis, originally it was at 14%. So I've just started this question, submitted it. So it's it's put it in progress. Um, and you'll see that now that that progress has then changed to 21%. So as I say, this is, this is live updating as we're working through. Hopefully, um, from a qualification which is um, sort of a knowledge-based qualification that gives you a bit of an overview as to what that looks like from a learner's perspective, how they can follow the kit, um, how the, the activities and units are laid out and as Ruth's just said the, the, the learners that they're working with find it quite easy to work through this portfolio and action things comfortably on their own which is obviously really positive. What I'm going to do next um, is I'm just going to move on to the team leader supervisor apprenticeship standard. Again, just to change, just to change over. Now you can have learners which are registered on um, team leading and customer service, or if they're on a standard, they could also be on a supporting qual. Anything that they're registered on the dashboard will appear here, just like these two are. And to change over, again, all you're going to do is just click on it, and you'll see that this is going to load. Um, again, the gap analysis and overall progress, as well as we've got the off the job percentage achieved. So the number of hours, so that 20% of hours which are allocated to that learner, as the learner's working through and logging them, it's giving them an overview of what they've achieved, how much is still to go. And if you scroll over it, it says there that there's 376 pending out of 428 hours. So that's just addition, obviously, because this is a standard. Now, as we work through this, I'm just going to scroll down. You'll see that there's a, this is obviously a lot larger than what we see in the PDE. So you've got a resources section. If I just click on there, um, these have got policies in there and off the job guide, um, high fields health and wellbeing booklets. This is a apprentice kit plus. If you, as a training provider, have your own that you want to work on, um, so you have any policies or anything like that that you want to pop in there, um, again, if you're using the kit, we can pop them all in the resources just here as PDFs, and then they're going to be available to the learner as they're working through. And I'm just going to click on that to close it back down. The induction section, I'll just quickly go through these to give you an idea, but there's the commitment statement, apprentice agreement, their CV, etc. So a learner can upload all these um, onto here. So if I just click in it just to give you an idea, it's just an upload function that the learner will upload the commitment statement here. So it's available to the training provider to go on, check they're happy with it, and then obviously mark it off. And then it's stored on that learner's portfolio on Vault so you can access it at any time. And again, just dashboard on the uh, top left. Now, it's the same structure as you work through. So the on program's the same. If I just click on here, you've got your quarterly reviews, your CPD logs, any certificates that the learners um, obtain while they've been on program. So you might use, um, again, for e-learning, you might have your certificates of completion, which you upload here. And then we move um, into the kit. So you'll see this kit um, has already had some use. So there's a number of different things which you can see happening here. But all I'm going to do um, is I'll click on the building relationships unit. And you'll see this has just dropped down. So for the um, apprenticeship standard, it's made up of um, knowledge, skills and behaviour. So there's a lot more laid out in a unit than what we see for your knowledge qualifications, so like PDE. Um, so we've got an overview at the top so that the learner knows what they're going to be working through. 
And then if you scroll down, exactly what we saw with PDA, say you've got your textbook just here, and then you've got your knowledge questions. Now, again, these are laid out exactly the same as what we see we saw in PDA, your questions, then you type in your answers and you work through these. In addition, you've got your skills and behaviours, and I'll click in that just so it gives you an idea of how it looks. So any skills and behaviours associated with this module, you'll see these are just listed. So you've got from uh, 3.1 to 3.6 here. There's no behaviours, and obviously if there's any merits or distinctions. Now the learner can upload their evidence um, to for any evidence that they've got for, for example, 3.1, so building trust, um, which you can upload here, and then the training provider can check that and mark that off. And again, I'm just going to go back to the dashboard. And then again, just scrolling down to that unit, you'll also see... Now, this is really just to give you an idea of how else we can utilise Vault. Um, you'll also see that there is um, some conflict management e-learning. Now, what I'll do is I'll just click into it to give you a bit of an idea of how that looks. Just bear in mind that because we're on a webinar, um, it might be a little bit slower, but um, it'll give you an idea of obviously how this looks and how we've integrated it into the uh, portfolio. So I'll leave it playing for a couple of seconds. This is Highfield e-learning, as I mentioned, it's part of the Kit Plus. And I'll just click on next. And like I say, I'll just leave that for a couple of minutes, well, a couple of seconds. Welcome to this module on managing conflict. By the end of this module, you'll be able to describe what conflict is and the various forms that it may take. You'll also look at how people's personalities and communication patterns can contribute towards conflict and understand the different net. So you should have just um, seen that I just used the top right to click on exit activity. So obviously a learner can work through these. Um, again, depending on if you are using Highfields Kit Plus, there is also the option which we'll touch on bespoke with later um, for us to look at embedding your own e-learning. Um, so depending on the qualification which you deliver or um, the standard if you've got your own sort of um, e-learning packages, we can have a look at integrating those as well. So hopefully this gives you a bit of an idea of how we've embedded into um, a unit the knowledge, the skills, the behaviours, um, the conflict management e-learning, which again, um, if you use Highfield e-learning, you'll know that that's usually on a separate site, so it's on the our LMS site. Whereas if you're using Vault, it's embedded into the kit. So it left you on the Vault page. A um, couple of other bits down here. So reflect on your learning and self-assessment and revision. Again, are embedded in and they're all relevant to this unit. Now, um, Becky. So um, you use a number of different courses on Vault and you use quite a lot of uh, apprenticeship standards, this being one of them. And you also use the Kit Plus. So you have the e-learning and you have your own uh, uh, additional supporting documents on there as well. What benefits do you feel there are to have all of this in one place? So all of your e-learning um, embedded in, your resources on there. So the portfolio is built with everything that the learner needs all in one place. Yeah, so we at Train to Train, we've used um, other e-portfolio systems and in comparison myself, my team and our learners find the vault much easier to use. Uh, the entire apprenticeship program can be accessed from one page. Uh, they don't have to use any other system, so no need to remember any other login details um, or to come off of, um, off, off of the vault to access anything. Um, we use the vault for all aspects of the apprenticeship on program learning, so everything's in one place. Uh, coach meetings, quarterly reviews, where off the job hours are logged. We have our prevent and safeguard and resources stored on the vault um, and we also use the vault for evidence in all of our induction documentation uh, so yeah it's incredibly easy for our learners to use yeah they find it really easy for them to follow through and build yeah. the portfolio okay great that's perfect thank you for that becky um so as becky just touched on um she also uses this to store um other bits so the top where i mentioned about supporting resources um, again, just to keep it all in one place for the learner and to make it simple, 
the resources section just here, um, Train to Train have their own documents. So on this one, these are uh, specifically tailored to Highfield, but Train to Train will have all their own documents in there, which you can store for the learners, as well as, um, as Becky's mentioned, the learners don't have to remember passwords to go onto the different e-learning sites and, and things like that. So they've great, integrated it. Um, as Becky's just said, the learners find it really easy to follow, which is a key point really, because what we don't want is for a learner to come on the system and struggle to use it and you lose that engagement. So um, we feel like Vault keeps, helps to keep learners engaged um, really well. So one more point to touch on from the learner's perspective, as I've said, we're gonna try and keep it quite um, short and brief on the actual uh, demonstration. But is the off the job hours and how you log it for an apprenticeship standard. So if you look at where my mouse is now, it's in the, in the middle of the screen. If I just move off to the right, you'll see that there's some pop outs. Now, if you can see the one that looks like a book, it says journal. If I just click in here, you'll see that this will load a number of um, different entries. Now, the journal can be utilised for many different things. If I just give you an idea, so we've got here, we've got um, review meetings, we've got additional support, we've got written assignments, mentoring, inductions. We've got a number of different things which the learner will use the vault to, um, to enter different things for off the job hours. Um, you can also arrange as a provider, you can put your meetings in the journal. So you'll see here a review meeting for a quarterly review. And what happens is it acts a bit like a calendar and it captures different data for the learner. Um, it's quite useful when it comes to um, input assessment and aud auditing and things like that. So you can see how this is all built up in the background. Now, what I'm gonna do um, is I'm just gonna show you how, we've, how we log these hours and put an entry in. If I just click on add a task at the top, You'll see this will load a page where we can enter a number of different things. So, as a learner, where it says receiver, you'll only see yourself. As a tutor or a training provider adding an entry, you'll have a list of your learners. So, you can select those learners um, and add the same entry in for them all. So, you can add it for multiple users. Obviously, the learner will only have themselves. The type, you should see this has just brought a uh, drop down. And all I'm going to do is I'm just going to select a written assignment. So I'm going to say we've done a written assignment and we're, this is where we're going to evidence the hours. Summary, I'm just going to put K3.1. Um, so I think that's the module we've just been looking at for building relationships. The learner can obviously put whatever the summary is of the entry that they're doing. Task description. Now this, um, again, depends on the learner, this description, um, the text box will just keep going on and on and on. I'm gonna keep it brief and just put writ uh, written assignment in there. The learner can enter sort of a detailed account of um, the additional evidence that they've done, um, the hours, the time, is anything like that that can, that can be as descriptive as they want in here. But for the demonstration purposes, I'm just gonna keep it simple and put written assignment. If they've got any evidence they want to upload with it, they can click on upload a file. And again, they'll just be able to go and select that from their PC. They can attach it to a specific, specific activity, which I'm going to do here. So I'm going to attach this written assignment entry that I'm doing to evidence the hours onto K3.1. The off the job hours, I'm just going to select here. And then um, you can add a deadline again, it depends on your entry. So if you was doing um, if you're if, if you're doing this as a tutor and you're entering a deadline for the learner, um, you can uh, set the deadline, it'll show up, and then once if it's been passed and not been marked as complete, it'll mark as overdue. And then an activity date. So again, you're just selecting what's relevant to you. The status um, I'm gonna set as completed. So say that I've already done this. The section, you'll see it's brought up all of the different modules um, in the standard. So I'm going to click on building relationships and then activity day. I'm going to click on us today, 1st of December. Scary. Right. 
attaching it to an activity so you'll see here where it says building relationships k3.1 so that's one of the knowledge modules i'm just going to click on there so if i've just written up um, my answers for them knowledge modules and i'd spent an hour off the job doing research i can attach this one hour to this specific one don't have to um, it's choice if the learner's done a number of hours which don't relate to any specific modules they can just put them overall um, on the hours and not attach it anywhere but just trying to show you how you can integrate things and then off the job hours i'm just going to put one and then all we're going to do is click on save a task at the top this will take us back to the journal and you'll see that that entry is now at the top for written assignment so again this gives you an idea so Again, I've had for doing that I've done an hour and I, um, on a written assignment and can attach it there. That will also have updated my off the job hours uh, completed on the dashboard. Um, and again, and if it's a tutor entry, um, obviously we can see here there's one for the 30th of November. So it's gone red because the deadline is overdue and it's still not being set as completed for the quarterly review. So hopefully that gives you a bit of an idea of how we can utilise the journal. Um, Becky, you guys use the journal quite a lot, especially with the standards. Um, your learners uh, log in the hours, you guys set your reviews and add your um, different thumbnails and recordings in here, I think I'm right in saying. Yes, yeah, that's right. How do you find that this helps sort of capture the data um, for the learner and what benefits do you feel there are um to being able to add your hours in here and evidence them and these sort of live updating okay yeah so it's, it's really easy for the learner to log their off the job hours on the vault uh, the vault updates instantly so learners coaches and our quality and compliance team can see this instantly so at any point in time we can view the distance traveled by our learners uh, this forms part of our reporting process to the senior management team and to our clients um, and we, most importantly, we feel really confident as a training provider that we can demonstrate in any audit that we're compliant with apprenticeship funding rules. Yeah, perfect. Okay, so that's great. Um, pretty much touching on the points which you just mentioned then. So again, great for um, obviously tracking that you're following the rules. Um, learners are finding it easy to use and log their hours. You can evidence all of this and it's capturing it all, which is, which is exactly what you want. And again, it's all in one place, isn't it? absolutely yeah perfect thank you for that becky great so hopefully this gives you a bit of an idea from a learner's perspective um again we kind of want to keep it brief um from this in terms of the demonstration we've still got quite a lot of sort of questions to cover um with um ruth gary and becky so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to move on to the um the tutor's perspective just to give you a bit of an idea of how we review work um, and things like that. So what I'm going to do is you'll quickly just see me change logins. So I'm just changing logins now over to um, a tutor, so one of our demonstration tutors. So you'll see now that this is just loaded, it should look um, it, it looks pretty similar, um, apart from you've got a couple of additional um, bits from the tutor's perspective. So what you do have is a navigation um, menu on the left hand side. So you can use this to click into the resources. So should you have questions um, from your learners about specific questions in a kit to view the kit, all you're going to do is use the left hand side navigation and it'll take you into the back and into the kit. Um, so you can view the activities and what the questions are to help your learners. You'll also see there's some different courses. So this Highfield Tutor is a number of different courses which they have learners for, which is why obviously they've got four um, different kits on here. What I want to do is just touch on reviewing work. Um, again, just really to highlight how simple it is as a, for you as, as tutors and assessors um, to, to review that work and leave some feedback. Now, we looked at the PDE kit, so we'll look at that submission. Now, as I mentioned, um, when we submitted this, the tutor will have had notification, which will be just at the top. So if you click on that, um, the notification's there. So you'll see that's one that I've just submitted. And they'll have also had an email. 
Now, all I'm going to do is I've just clicked on this resource and, and I've just scrolled down to the bottom. You'll see that it says my learners. So any learners which you've got on this um, qualification will be listed down below. Now, obviously, we've only got the one demonstration learner on here. And what we'll go and do is review this piece of work. So detailed learner results is where we're going to click into. And what that's going to do is it's going to lo load the learner's portfolio, but only four units which have been submitted. So you'll see the two units which have been submitted. Um, producer CV is the one which we just did. The reason why it's only showing submitted is because it automatically filters um, to show submitted only. You can untick that and view the whole portfolio, so all of the sections. Um, however, we find it just makes it a bit simpler for you to be able to see um, sort of what's on your caseload and submitted by that learner at one time. And again, you, you can just easily um, untick it and just see all, all the portfolio. To view this specific unit, we're just going to click on it. So I've just clicked on producer CV and you'll see it's loaded the question which I've just submitted. So that answer should look familiar. This is my answer. If you was a tutor and you clicked into this, you'd obviously be able to work through them. So question one, you've got read only view. So you'll work through all of the questions. Um, obviously we'd hope that these would be filled in if the learner had submitted it. Um, and then down at the bottom, you've got support and evidence. So if there was anything attached, you'd be able to click on it. And again, that would just download to the left hand side for you to open up and review. What we'll do is we'll just quickly pop some feedback on there. It's just the speech bubble just here, the clear speech bubble. And if you click into there, there's obviously no message at this time. So we're going to click on edit. This is the first review which we've done for this learner, so there's no history of feedback or anything like that. And I'm just going to pop my feedback as please expand on question one. Depending on what you're doing with the learner, you can either refer it or mark it as complete. And you'll see all that does there is just changes the tutor message. So obviously red to action and green, good to go. I'm going to leave this on referred because we're going to send it back to the learner. One thing just to point out is if the learner sent you anything on email um, and you've got some additional work which is relevant to this specific activity and you want to upload it there, all that you'll do is you'll drag and drop that piece of work or that Word document into the comments here and it attaches it to that form. So again, you just drag and drop it into here, really simple, and it'll attach it to that form. Sending the message to a form, I'm just going to click on this obviously say success and what that'll do now is it'll again it'll give the learner a notification and an email to say that the tutors um, submitted some feedback now I can see I've left feedback on there you'll see there's a speech bubble next to where it says submitted uh, the green tick sorry there's a uh, there's a speech bubble on there with my feedback if I want to view that feedback that I've popped on there so Say that the learner sends this to you, you've referred it back, it goes back and forth, back and forth before you can mark it off as complete. There's obviously going to be a number of different bits of feedback on there. And you might not remember the first bit of feedback which, which you originally popped on. Now, what Vault will do is it'll track that for you. And if I just click on the speech bubble with the clock in it, you'll see that there's message history on there. So this will build up for each piece of feedback which you put on that specific activity. It'll tell you who's put it on there, what date and what time. So again, and this would also be available to your IQA, to the training provider who has a bird's eye view. We'll touch on those roles later so that they can see what history um, of feedback has gone on there. I'll just click on exit. Now we can either mark it off as complete, so we'd set it as complete, or we'll refer it back. And I'm just going to click on set in progress to refer it back to the learner. The reason why we do this is so that it unlocks the results for the learner. So if everybody remembers when we submitted it, um, it blocked it out so that the learner couldn't answer any more, anything else until it had been reviewed. We have to set it back in progress and basically unlock it for the learner. Again, really simple. We we'll just click on set and then unlock results. And what you'll see is it changes it from submitted. 
And if I just scroll down, you'll see that that's gone then off of the submitted because we've sent it back to the learner. So again, I think that's really easy, um, obviously, to review that work and send it back. Um, but again, obviously, I'm quite familiar with the system um, and have been involved in this for a long time. So I suppose the question really is, Ruth, do you find it easy enough working on the system daily to be able to go in there and review that work? Um, what's sort of your experience of this? Yeah, it is really easy to do that. Yeah. Um, and as I say, um, the learners can can see straight away what's been submitted, what hasn't from the colours, of the, from the ticks. And then when they go back to the dashboard as well, it tells them yeah. if they've had something sent back. Yeah. <clears throat> and do you, do you find it quite useful having the um, the history of the feedback which you popped on there so you can refer back to it if you need to? Yes, yeah, I think um, it's not such an issue for us because I say they are short courses. I think like if you were doing courses over a longer period of time, that would be really useful. But yeah, it does show like the progression. So, you know, you've sent something back, they've done something with it, they've sent it back to you, you've sent it back again. So it does show what's going on. So that's good. Yeah. And I suppose, Becky, that's probably something that, like, uh, your learners obviously on programme a lot longer and they might not answer their, their answers as quick as what um, Pet Excise learners go through. So do you find that quite useful to be able to see? Yeah, absolutely. It's really easy. Marking work is easy. The bulk sends the coach an email, um, you know, they select it, um, provide uh, feedback to the learners. And then obviously we have the feedback is stored. Uh, so at any point in time, the tutor, you know, coach, the learner can refer to it. Our quality team can do a sample, um, which can all be used for audit purposes. Yeah, perfect. Okay, great. So thank you for that. Um, thank you for that feedback, feedback, guys. That's great. Um, hopefully this gives everybody a bit of an idea um, of of how um, it sort of looks from a, a learner's perspective, um, as well as um, we really would just wanted to touch on how easy it is to review work and things from a, um, a tutor's point of view. I'm just going to click back onto the dashboard. So again, it's always just the top left. Um, the journal works in the exact same way for um, the tutor as it does the learner. Um, and I think I know that we've already touched on this just slightly, Becky, but you guys use the journal for setting tasks and um, helping you sort of track that and meet those deadlines, like what we saw in the learner's portfolio where one was, you could see it was overdue. So how does that help you as a provider to, to track that and set these deadlines and tasks? Yeah, so absolutely. We use the journal um, for lots of things, but um, primarily for setting tasks. Uh, so again, the learner uh, is set a task which they're informed of through the vault. It goes to their email address. Um, and from again, from a historical point of view, our, our quality compliance team can use that as part of our quality assurance process and for auditing purposes as well. Yeah, yeah. And does that help you keep on track on track with the learners to see when they're overdue or yeah, when things are? Yeah, exactly. So again, as part of our quality assurance process, we have um, we we monitor. Uh, distance travelled on a monthly basis and then we can use that to report from and be back to the senior management team. Yeah, perfect, great. Okay, that's amazing. Thank you, Becky. Okay, um, okay so from a, um, from a demonstration point of view, I think that's probably covered enough in the time that we have today. There's still some other bits which we um, want to touch on on additional roles and things. So all I'm going to quickly do is I'm just going to click back into the presentation um we go get that full screen might just have to scroll through again guys just one minute there we go right okay um next bit which we wanted to touch on i think adam's going to have a bit of input here um is additional roles so on vault we have um a number of different roles so you've got the learner point of view which we've just looked at we've got the tutor and assessor login we've got the training provider role the iqa role um and then obviously the eqs and um, sort of external roles which can be used for um either your eqs team your endpoint assessor um for providers using standards or any different contracts there's logins where the employer can log in and have a bit of an overview do you know that you guys use, don't you, Becky? We do, yeah. Yeah, yeah we have mentors, yeah. Yeah, which log in. Um, 
but to think it's been really useful um for the employer and things to be yeah. able to log in yeah so provide support to apprentices yeah um, perfect yeah amazing okay so just to touch on these roles um iqa um the iqa has a read-only role so be able to go in and view the learner's portfolio um pick out their sample upload their reports um is learner specific so we can attach the iqa to different cohorts um, and then obviously there's the reporting tool again which we'll touch on in a moment um, and then the training provider role so the training provider role has got bird's eye view um, of everything which goes off basically on vault under your center um, they can click into the journals they can have a look at the learners portfolios they can track the progress as Beck has mentioned um, they use that quite a lot of tracking progress um, and distance traveled so the training provider role is a bird's eye view of everything which is going on under your centre. Now, in terms of um, additional roles, I think, Gary, this is probably a question for you. Um, as a, so Gary has a training provider role on Vault, and I know that we've probably touched on this before, but obviously your learners are on programme um, a lot short of time, so maybe a week, two weeks, uh, two weeks long. Do you ever find that learners can sometimes um, during these sessions not feel like they have the voice to speak out if they're struggling or falling behind or anything like that? Does the reporting enable you to be able to identify this and help support learners additionally um, yeah, from what you can do about? Yeah, I think the good the good thing for um for us is because it is a sh obviously a short a short program and and everything's done um online so we deliver via a live classroom um so we have um, an assessor delivering the program within the classroom and then we have the an assessor marking the portfolios as well um so it can seem that everybody's engaged in the class or answering questions or they're you know they're, they're engaging in feedback um, but it's not until obviously the assessor goes to mark where we can actually see um, how people are getting on um, and if, if someone's struggling or not, especially, you know, in a face-to-face -face environment, we can, you know, you can physically tell if someone's disengaged or, or they're, you know, getting nervous or anxious or struggling. Online, obviously, that's a lot more difficult. The good thing is with Evolve, because of the small, small units that can get marked at each different stage, um, within sort of an hour of them, them starting work, our assessors then marking some of the units and going through that so they can quickly highlight who where people are at in terms of their ability who's struggling who needs extra support or maybe you know at break time who needs a phone call from our IAG advisor just to make sure they're okay and they're they, they, they're getting on okay and then they're, they're not struggling too much yeah yeah because that and again that's that's one of the struggles with delivering online is that it's it's a lot harder to identify if someone is falling behind and, and as we mentioned learners might always have the confidence to speak up and say that they're struggling so um the fact that as you've just mentioned vault helps you to identify that when you're looking at work and seeing who's falling behind and things like that it is really good and do you find that that also helps you to keep the learners engaged as well because you can be more proactive yeah. with them in support <laughs> Yeah, definitely. I think because obviously very early on we can see because um, previously we used to just use the the workbooks before we used a vault. Um, and yeah. what my, what they would do is say when we do customer services, when they finish unit one, they would send that back to the tutors to be marked. Um, obviously, there's there's the two units within customer services, so that might be after the first three days that we'd actually get the workbook and people are telling us that they're engaged, they're happy, they know what they're doing. And then it comes back and their, their answers show they obviously needed a lot more support. Um, yeah. The vault, like I say, within about an hour and a half, we can see that someone's struggling. Um, but also, like you say, in, in terms of engagement, it means sometimes someone really struggled and we, we couldn't pick it up previously and we maybe lost them before they submitted unit one. Now at this yeah. um, at this stage, after they've done the first six or seven questions, we're going through it, and actually we can spot where maybe someone's struggling or someone needs that support before they maybe think that they're struggling and need that support. So we can get we can support them straight away, and like I say, we can either you know get the tutor to call them or one of our IAG coordinators to phone them and 
um, it, it does it does it does make sure that it ensures that retention is higher because we can engage with learners and we can spot these signs straight away. Yeah, that's fantastic. It's brilliant. Thank you for that, Gary. Um, and I suppose the next question really is um, reporting. So reporting, which is available on Vault, um, which you can see, obviously, we've said that there's some reporting tools available, things like and Gary's touched on it. Um, there's, an, there's the main report, which is available on Vault, will allow you to identify, um, one, the progression um, of a learner. So if they've got target date of um, when they should reach the end of their programme, it will show you where they should be, where you'd expect them to be, what units are in progress but haven't been submitted, um, anything that they've not yet started. So if you'd expected them to start it and they've not, again, you can just identify ways of picking it up. So the reporting which is available on, on Vault is um, it, it, it's, it covers quite a wide um, range of things which you would need to know as a provider. So um, Becky, how, how do you how do you, useful do you find the reporting what's available and also does how does Vault help you and the reporting to stay off um, offset compliant? Yes, the reporting is very useful. Uh, the reports can show an uh, overview of cohorts, um, or we can look at specific learners in detail. Uh, we use the provider dashboard to see information such as when a learner has last logged in, uh, targets that they've completed, or outstanding tasks. Um, our compliance and quality team regularly uh, use the reports um, to feedback to uh, senior management team, um, and yeah, we can then make sure. Um, as part of that quality process that we're saying compliant um, with the ESFA and Ofsted. Yeah, perfect, amazing, thank you. So you find it really useful then, essentially. Yeah, yeah. It's really useful and it just is the format that the reports come in are really easy to use. Yeah, good. So, okay, perfect, easy to use, I love that. <laughs> um, great, okay, so additional roles, hopefully we've covered a little bit about that. Um, there is obviously more information which we can give you. I don't know if there's any questions. I think Adam's answering some in the background. So um, hopefully if there's any, if you've got any questions, pop them into the chat box. We'll either come back to you at the end or I'd, I'd say Adam's answering some of you now. Um, recap. So at this point, I'm just going to briefly uh, hand over to Adam, um, just cover a bit of a recap of, of what we've gone through. Um, and again, we'll be picking your questions up just while Adam does this. Thanks, Chelsea. So uh, there have been a couple of questions that did come in, not really any that we need to, uh, to answer uh, just now. Um, please do again, as Chelsea said, just keep them coming through. Uh, if you can answer them before we close the webinar, we can uh, pick them up later. Uh, alternatively, just, just drop us an email on that. Um, so from what Chelsea's been through there uh, and the input that we've had, you'll, you'll see that uh, Hyper Vault is um, as described, so uh, easy and simple to access and use, uh, gives you all of the tools that you would hope to have uh, within an ePortfolio platform, so allow you to record all activity, choosers engaging, reviewing work, recording feedback, etc. Um, I, I guess the key messages here are uh, really the uh, the speed at which we can help you implement uh, Highfield Vault as a platform. Talk to you a little bit about the ongoing support in a moment, but the key message is uh, that it's an adaptable program uh, system, uh, browser based, that you can pick up and, uh, and deliver and start to use with your learners really very quickly indeed. Uh, and have the confidence that if you were to implement this as a learning provider, uh, that, um, you get, uh, that you'd have the full support of the Highfield team in its implementation. Um, so we've got preloaded courses it's, uh, that you can use. We've got the uh, the journal uh, and all of the relevant access for key stakeholders in the delivery of uh, of training. Uh, and, uh, and we hope that uh, today's short demonstration would really uh, really help with uh, with a review of that. So the ongoing support that uh, that we can provide. Uh, is going to be through our fantastic account management team uh, in Highfield, uh, Chelsea and colleagues in the uh, the Vault team, um, and uh, and helping. Uh, I don't think we really touched on this a great deal, uh, but uh, the conversion of your own content and embedding of that into Vault uh, 
um, and providing full digi digitization of any of the content that maybe you have for some of the programs that you wish to deliver. Just to touch on that, on um, customizing your own content and having your own content uploaded on there, uh, Becky, this is something that you guys have done for some of the larger providers and retailers which you work with. Yeah, we have. We've done it for apprenticeships and for our short courses. So, you know, we can really bespoke our um, training materials to meet the needs of our clients. Yeah. Which is, yeah, it, it really complements our offering. And how did you find the process? Did you find it with the team quite straightforward? Yeah, and really, really easy. It's always, it's always easy working with the team at Highfield. Um, there's always somebody there on support at any time that we've needed it. Yeah, yeah perfect. Yeah. yeah. Perfect, thank you for that. Um, yeah, so that's just obviously touching on the um, digitising content, something that the in-house team will work with you on. Um, so yeah, if anyone is looking for that, has any questions, again, just pop them in the chat box and we can get back to you. Yeah, it's just a question of uh, consultation with our experts who will help uh, hopefully realise some of the uh, um, uh, dreams programmes that you want to, uh, to set in place. Uh, for uh, delivery and rollout to, uh, to your own customers. Um, obviously, we do provide ongoing technical support as part of the package with Bolt, so you'll never be left stranded struggling with the, uh, the system. And they are really very quick to, uh, to pick that up if there's anything that's, uh, that we need uh, to support you on. Now, obviously, there's a commercial aspect to uh, you, the use of any platform. Uh, we do offer a, uh, a pay-as-you-go basis for uh, provision on, on Highfield Vault and for learner sign up So a uh, couple of the headline figures there for you. So you've got £12.50 uh, for Vault access for any standalone qualification. Uh, for longer programmes, apprenticeship programmes, you'll be looking at £25 uh, plus back for uh, an apprenticeship. Um, these are for Vault Access. Um, if you are looking at uh, Highfield for uh, the digitisation of any of your content, uh, there's a there'd be a uh, three hundred and fifty pounds or part thereof per day uh, of uh, of work towards um, uh, creating that content for you. Um, but uh, but as as you know, and as we've seen today, uh, one of the key things or the key offers that we have is that you can access our own. Uh, learning resources through some of our packages. So we'll have a look at some of the uh, the figures there. Um, so some of the these are some of the widely used programs that we have, um, and uh, and do include uh, the cost where we have uh, the uh, the standalone qualifications, the cost of the learning registration and certification uh, in with the package. So uh, for example, I'll just highlight a couple of them: um, prep to work in adult health and social care. Um, total qualification fees £52, eKit uh, £25, and then £12.54, Vault giving you a, a total figure of £99.50 uh, for any learner that were to start and complete that qualification with Highfields. Uh, of course, if you're not currently a Highfields qualification centre, uh, that's something that we can support you with, and we'd love to, uh, to hear from you about working with us uh, as, a, as an awarding body as well. Uh, and then uh, we've got some figures there for uh, apprenticeship programmes too. Again, we will be sharing these slides, so uh, we will send you a full price list for all of the uh, the preload of content on Vault too. So hopefully what we've covered gives you a very good idea. I'm, I'm quite conscious we're a couple of minutes over, so um, apologies to everyone that we're running four minutes behind at the minute. Um, Sort of last couple of questions, really, and I've just seen some of these um, on the on the chat as well. Um, probably a question um, which I'll, I'll fire over to Becky. Gary, I'll send this one to you too. But um, Becky, do you feel that Vault allows you to improve on your offer, and do you see Vault as a additional selling feature and an add to what um, offer you have? Uh yeah, it, it really complements it complements our offer. Um, you know, it gives um, the learner an excellent e-portfolio system to use. It's very easy to use. For us, it's great value for money as well. Um, you know, we have used yeah, previously another e-portfolio system which wasn't as easy to use, and I think it's probably more than double the cost. Yeah. So yeah, we found it's been really, really great. Yeah, and, and, and most important of all, our learners really like it. Yeah, learners like it. Good, great value for money, 
and it obviously helps you, gives you that additional um, sort of feature in your offering. And, and Gary, sort of same question for you. How do you feel about, does Vault give you any sort of features again in your offering? Um, do you feel like it's good value for money? Um, is, it so, is it something that you'd recommend to other providers? Yeah. So I can I can echo everything that was just said on there, but also with ourselves, um, because of the fast paced nature of our courses, you know, we run a lot of short courses, um, 10 day courses, that sort of thing. We can it gives us live feedback. Um, so like we were saying earlier, you know, learning can be completing um, completed a, a module at, at half 10, 11 o'clock in the morning. And by lunchtime, they've got they've got feedback. Um, but yeah, no, the you know is 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 really good value for money. It, it supports us with everything we're doing. Like I said previously, when we first went into lockdown, we was doing remote learning, and we were just sending the the PDF workbooks out to learners to complete, and then send back to us. They were having to download it. They didn't have the right software on the computer and things like this. This you know, especially for the where the embedded resources already are, it, it's it's fantastic because a learner can go on, they can lo log in. They've got question one, they can answer question one in the box and move to question two. They don't have to download anything, they don't have to share or load. Um, so it, it works really well. It just um it adds adds to our offer. Um and like you say, it just it, it just gives it a little bit more efficiency as well and professionalism rather than us sending out links to different drop boxes or or PDFs. Um they can actually log into something that's that's there that looks professional and, and all the resources are on there. Yeah. Yeah, amazing. And that and that's sort of our, you know, the main reason behind Vault is something simple for the learners to use. Um, you know, user friendly, learner can go on, they can use it without a problem. Training providers can pull the information that they need and great value for money. Obviously with five fields team supporting um in the background. So yeah, so but it's amazing that, that you guys really feel like that's what we've done. So um thank you for that bit of feedback. I think that's probably everything because we are running a little bit over um, and uh, Adam's just going to go over the um, sort of last um, closing bits um, but yeah thank you to everyone that's listened. Yeah thanks Chelsea um, and thank you to everyone that's joined us today it's really important that we were able to provide you guys with a bit of, a, uh, bit of an overview of uh, current users or at least a view from current users as well so thank you to everyone that's joined us today. Uh, and thank you for you, to, uh, you guys to uh, attending and jumping on that and spending an hour with us uh, to go through Vault. Uh, we will send a copy of the, supply, uh, of the slides uh, on email uh, to all attendees. That will be uh, coming through from Amy. Uh, please do watch out for that um, and, uh, and do let us know uh, if you have any comments uh, on what you've seen today. Uh, we do plan to share a recording of the webinar on our YouTube channel, the Highfields Group. Um, so do have a look um, and please do feel free to subscribe to the channel and turn on alerts to receive notifications when a new video has been uploaded. There's a lot of good stuff planned, certainly over the next few weeks, but moving into the new year. Um, so uh, do have a quick search um, on YouTube for us. Uh, please also do complete the short survey that will pop up after the webinar. Um, it's important that you provide us with feedback, particularly on uh, the webinar that's, uh, that you've seen there today and any future content that you would like to see from Highfield. Um, and just finally from me, thanks for joining us again. Um, and I, uh, I do hope we'll, uh, we'll be working with you on Vault in the future. Yeah. Have a great day, everyone.